everybody, Patty Ann here. Hey, the next two videos that I do are going to be all about angels. It's the season of angels. It's near Christmas time, although I think angels are good any time of year. But the angels I'm going to show you this time, or at least in this video, happens to be made with the foil quill. And these things are on sale at a terrific price right now. I'll have a link for you down below. I actually did this one with my Silhouette Portrait 3. You know how I've been recommending that thing. If you have a child or a preteen or a, a teenager or an adult, someone that you know likes crafting, grab them this machine. It is perfect for them. I promise they will love, love, love it. It's much better than the Cricut Joy, in my humble opinion, because the Cricut Joy can only take something, I think, that's four and a half inches wide, but the but the um, portrait can take eight and a half by 11 sheets of paper. Not only that, it can do big, long rolls up to 20 feet of vinyl if you want to cut vinyl. And it can do print then cut, which the Joy cannot do. So, And it can take this foil quill pen. And the great thing about the foil quill pen is it fits in all of the machines. I've used this in my Cricut Explore Air. I've used it in my Cameo 3, my Cameo 4, and now my Portrait. Because you get all the different adapters when you purchase this. And you get three different sizes of pens that you can use. And you get foil, and some of my stuff is still in there. You get a fabulous little instruction booklet. And here's what it looks like. So for this machine, for my Cameo 4, or for my portrait, I'll use adapter D. For Cricut, I believe I use the adapter C. And all the adapter means is you just take this, the quill, this is the part that heats up and goes on top of the foil, and then you just put the adapter on it and then it'll fit perfectly right into your machine. This part gets plugged in to an outlet. Maybe you have one from, um, well, like this, from an iPhone. You just plug it like this and then into a socket. Or what I do with mine is I have an auxiliary power source, a battery pack. I just plug mine into here, and then you'll notice that that light came on. Did you see that? When I unplug it, the light will go off. When it's plugged in, this tip here starts to heat up. So I'm not heating that yet. But anyway, today I'm going to show you how to do this on the portrait. Again, I'll have that link for you down below. I'll have this link for you. I'll have the portrait machine link for you. Best prices I can find anywhere. And I sure do appreciate it when you use my link. There's no extra charge to you. I make a smidgen of a commission. And it helps me to be able to fund buying these things so I can make tutorials for you. So follow me to my desk and let's get Get started. Okay, I know a lot of you have subscriptions to Creative Fabrica. If you have one, this is the perfect place to use it. If you don't have one, you might want to consider getting one. It's a really fabulous deal. You can always find everything that you need here at Creative Fabrica. But you can also buy things one at a time. I have a link for you down below for this particular page that I'm on because it has a bunch of mandalas that would work perfectly. Now the one that I chose is this one right here, Angel Mandala Christmas. But look at all these that I could choose. Stocking, deer, bow, snowman, star, another stocking, Christmas tree. I mean, just on and on, just like really pretty ones that we could use. So in order to use one, why don't I choose a different one? I'll choose the... Hmm, I think I'll choose the snowman. And so when I click on him, now you won't see the price for him because I do have a subscription. And once you have the subscription, you can download anything and everything as often as you like, as long as you have the subscription. And guess what? Unlike Design Space, after you quit the subscription, the things that you got while you were a subscriber remain yours. They don't get sucked back into the company aka Cricut. You get to keep them forever and ever. So think about that next time you're getting the Cricut um, uh, Design Space is Access. I had that for years and years. And then when I finally quit having it, I no longer owned any of those things. I had to purchase them again if I wanted to use them. Not so with Creative Fabrica. 
once you buy them, once you download them, they're on your computer. They're yours to keep. So without further ado, let me download this thing. Again, we can't see what price it is because uh, I'm, I'm a member and so you don't see those. So here it is down here in the lower left hand corner. It says snowman. So I'm going to double click on that. And it's going to open up kind of, but not totally. I can't use it yet. I have to extract it, extract the files, double click on that and whoops, click on that and that will extract them. I just leave the destination the way it comes up and it always goes to my downloads folder. I'll say extract. It's going to show me the extracted files now. Now, I don't really need to do anything with these. What I'm going to do next is open up Silhouette. Here's the angel that I used. Uh, I'm going to open up a new window or a new workspace by just clicking on the little plus. Then I'm going to go to File and Merge because I want to merge it right into this page. Now it opened automatically in the last folder I was in and that's where the angels were. So I'm going to go up and I'm going to look for, and these are some other things I recently got from Creative Fabrica. The one called A Year of Gnomes is adorable. But anyway, let's see. Wasn't the angel, was the snowman mandala. Here it is. Now you'll notice there's two different versions of this. There's this one that has a zipper on it. That's the zipped file, the one we cannot use until we unzip it. Once it's unzipped, it'll look just like this, but I can double click on it to open it. And another thing I can do in Windows right here is to see what it looks like. I can right click over here and say View and I can click on Extra Large Icons and that lets me see exactly what I'm seeing, viewing. So I'm just going to click on the snowman, the PNG one and bring him in. He's going to come in huge. I knew he would. So I'm going to click on him, make sure that the lock is locked right here and I'm going to make him about four and a half inches tall, 4.5. And now I don't know where he went, but all you have to do is come up here to this tool right here that says center to page because the snowman is still selected. And if I hit center to page, bingo, there he goes, center to page. So let's see, he's a little over 3.7 inches wide and four and a half inches tall. That's perfect. That's the way I'm going to leave him. So let's see, let me um, show you what I'm going to do next. Okay, one thing I decided to do before I did my snowman was I just added the text to Merry Christmas. The font that I used was one called Moon Child Caps. And I got that, I believe, from defont.com. So I put that down here and I centered it and I grouped both of these things together. The next thing that I did was I moved him down so that the topmost part of him was an inch down from the top and the place to the left was an inch in. So that's going to help me when I place my foil. Now the foil that I'm going to use is a little bit different. It's white. I figured that'd be perfect for a snowman. So what I'm going to do first is just take my ruler here that I have and just kind of cut off a nice straight edge just so I have something good to work with. So let's see, there we go, okay, and I'm going to use an X-Acto knife, but I just twirled it a little bit, make sure that's straight with that, and this is straight there, press down, and just cut that, so I have a nice straight edge. The next thing I'm going to do is look back up at my screen. And you'll see that he is, well, how many inches I need tall. I'm going to count this one because I'm going to start it from way up at the top of my paper. So I want one, two, three, four, five, six, seven inches tall all the way down to here. And one, two, three, four, five, maybe six inches wide. What do I have for my width? Okay, I have automatically this stuff is six inches wide, so that's perfect. So six inches wide, and I think I said seven tall, right? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, yes. So I'm gonna go ahead and measure to seven inches. So if I start here on my mat, it's 
why I like having a cutting mat here. If I start at 14, I can go to 21, and that will automatically be my 7 inches. And I can just cut this again with my X-Acto knife like that. Okay, and as I said, I'm going to use my little machine that I love, love, love using, my little portrait. And the reason why I love using that is so convenient, and it just works beautifully. Look at this little baby I'm bringing up here. Here she is, my little portrait. Okay, hopefully you can see it. I have my paper here, my cardstock, black cardstock. It's eight and a half by 11 sheet that I put on here. And now I'm gonna put on my um, foil, pretty side or good side up. Okay, then what you do is you take, and I wish I had some wider available, take um, washi tape and just cut off pieces and then just tape it down like so. And then you like to make sure that there's no wrinkles in it. So then I'm gonna come down to the other part as soon as I find the edge. Here it is, you little rascal. Okay, so just grab another piece, tear that off. Again, make sure there's no wrinkles. If there's a little teeny tiny bit of wrinkle, you know, don't get like crazy about it, but do the best you can like that. And then I'll put one here on the side. Whoopsie. And see a little bit of wrinkle there is not gonna hurt. One on this side. Okay, that's all there is to it. And then I should have been heating up my little portrait while I was doing this. So what I need to do is for the portrait, and I sure hope you can see this, I'm gonna take out this little blade that's already in here automatically, and I'm just gonna add my little quill pen. Remember with the D, put it in here, push it till it snaps. You can hear it snap and you know it's in there perfectly. Then I'm going to take my little um, auxiliary pad, pack, plug it into here. See that light up? And now you need to move this so it's not gonna be in the way. It's not gonna get caught up. I need to let that heat up for about five minutes. So I'll be back here in just a moment. Okay, it should be pretty well heated up. I did forget to tell you, you can put this little piece that they send you underneath of this blade just to make sure nothing gets heated up that shouldn't. I've never even had this thing feel like it was even warm, but I guess it's a precaution. So the next thing I'm going to do is I'm just gonna take this. Hopefully I can see, there we go, like that. And I'm gonna hit the arrow to send that right in. I'm gonna come up here to send. And what I've done, and if you look up here at my screen, okay, I'm going to hit send, and I make it to my sketch is the action. Cardstock textured heavy is my material. The pen is my tool. I like to make my force way up. I did it to like a 26. Worked for me. You may have to just try different things to see what you like. And I like the speed to be about a three, okay? So it's ready to go. And all I have to do is say send, and then it'll give me a rough idea of how long it's gonna take. And once we see that, then I'll meet you back here. Okay, as you notice here, it says it's going to take seven minutes and 46 seconds. So I'll meet you back here. Okay, it's totally finished. Before I take it out, I always like to check to see how things are going. And look at this, it is beautiful. Oh my gosh, so I'll just eject this from the machine and I'll unplug this from the auxiliary battery. Turn this off so as not to wear it out. There we go. <laughs> and then just take this off with my little portrait, my little baby. And here we go. Oh my gosh, this is so cute, you guys. So cute. So I've just turned this over. Now this is white foil that I've used here. 
So what I can do is turn it over like this, just take it off of my mat. And now what I can do is cut it to fit on a card. So let me turn my portrait off as well. And I'll go ahead and move it over here so it's out of my way. And let's see, what size shall I cut this to be? Um, hmm. Let's see. The best thing probably to use for this, in this case, is probably my paper trimmer instead of my exacto uh, knife. So cards are usually five. Well, let me get up close here. Let's see. Gonna have his fingertip hit this line right here. I don't do things very scientifically. Turn this one over this way and maybe make his fingertip again touch that little line like that. Okay, so there we go for that. And then, how about if I make the Merry Christmas touch that little line, lined up straight, and maybe kind of like the top of his head. Hat, touch that little line. Okay, there we go. So we have the first part of our card. Isn't that super adorable, cute? Love it. Okay, to jazz him up just a little bit, I'm gonna use a je jelly roll pen. And just make sure it's coming out. Just gonna draw some snowflakes on here. I was going to splatter paint, but I really didn't want to get it into the really beautiful, intricate design that's in the center of him. So I changed my mind about that. looks really good. Very happy with it. Okay, and then I will just place it oh, probably on here and then put another sentiment inside. Notice that my Merry Christmas here is not filled in. If I wanted to, I could go ahead and fill it in with this Jelly Roll pen, but I think I'll leave it as it is. So, that's pretty much it. That's how easy it is to make these cards. I would just attach this with either a liquid adhesive or I like to use this tape runner a lot of times if it's not something intricate where I feel like I'm going to need wiggle time to move it around. So let's put this right in front of me like this. Perfect. Oh, so cute. So here's the two different kinds I made. Hopefully you can see these pretty well. This one, and I still have to put a sentiment on my angel. This one was done with the silver, and this was done with white foil. Aren't they cute? I love them a lot. And you know, if I really wanted to, I could do a little brown paint in here to make it just a little, few little colors if I wanted, but I really like him just the way he is. So let me get a good picture of this and I'll put it at the very end. So thank you so much for joining me. Remember, I'll have a link down below in case you want to get the foil quill. They are on sale and they fit all of the machines. Um, you don't get white foil with it. You get a copper, a gold, and a silver, I think. Yes. Which are beautiful, beautiful colors to use, especially at this time of year. I also have a link to my favorite little machine down there, the Silhouette Portrait. I promise you, if you don't have a cutting machine or a machine like this, you'll love it. If you want something small and compact that you can lift with one hand, but yet can do a lot of stuff, it's very mighty, mighty, mighty machine. Grab one. You'll be happy. So again, thanks for joining me. See you all again soon. Oh, don't forget, I'm going to have another angel to show you tomorrow. This one's going to light up. It's super Super cute. So again, thanks. Bye, y'all.